about me. Think of that whole flow, childhood to school, to the streets, to jail, to the military, to jobs, to entrepreneurship, to fatherhood. That is all combined in a nutshell. Just right now, we, we are operating the family as if it's a business, a successful, thriving, impactful business. The, and what better business could you be in as a man than fathering your family? That is the number one. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And today, we're going to say this is really a, an episode about how to run your family, how to get your house in order, how to run your family like a business, but it's not, not really just like a business. I want to break this down really from the beginning. In, in our household, we run it based off of experience both good and bad, by learning from the bad on how not to do it, from the good on how to use that and combine those two things together. And that's how we run our family and our house. And it starts from childhood, all right? From childhood, then to going to school, because I did go to school until I graduated high school, barely. My kids are homeschooled now, but we use that on how to homeschool and how not to do things, probably. When I was running wild in the streets before the Marine Corps and going to jail, Learn things there. There are lessons learned in the military. Talk about leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving, structure, discipline. Then getting having regular jobs and working for other people and then entrepreneurship, working for others, and then fatherhood where you are now thinking of outside of yourself and no longer just thinking it's only about me. Think of that whole flow childhood, to school, to the streets, to jail, to the military, to jobs, to entrepreneurship, to fatherhood. That is all combined in a nutshell, how we run our family, which we call our freak family, how we do this. But I want to really specifically tie it into, and, and this could tie into both the military, but really think of business, how to run the family like a business. And you run it like a business by pulling aspects of your childhood, pulling aspects of, of schooling, of, of what you learned in the street, of jail, of military, of jobs, of entrepreneurship, and fatherhood. And but So what areas are kind of overlapping fields of fire when it comes to running a family? So you think of, right, what things worked in business or what things worked in the military? What didn't work in childhood? What didn't work in school? What lessons did I learn in the streets and in jail? What are the experiences I had in entrepreneurship? What are the higher calling and the purpose-driven life that I have as a father? And how does that all ball up and tie together? And, and there's, here's a couple, a couple of things that I came up with that how to run your, we're just going to call it how to run your family like a business. And the first thing right off the bat, is to have core values. You have core values in your business. You probably don't even know them or follow them or enforce them, but you should have them and they should be meaningful. They should mean something specifically to your company and your way of doing things as an organization. And you have them in the business though. Why do you not have them as a family? We did a whole separate episode on core values. So we're not even going to run through it, but we have core values in our family called the Freak Code. And it's based off of 12 different words, and each word has a specific meaning. We don't need to go into all the meanings, but just to, to give you an example, the words are the discipline, energy, confidence, action, or attack, mind, body, listen, create, mission, win, protect, and freak. And each of those has a specific meaning and a specific core value and code attached to them. And that's how we set the standard. We live the standard and enforce the standard as a family, the same way you would as a business. Put everything up against the mirror of your core values. And then we have an operating system, the same way you would in a business, kind of SOPs and way of thinking, way of operating, like we have built into those core values, is our kind of freak operating system of, of bring the freaking fire every second of every second. If you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game and no excuses, never make any, never accept any. That's kind of the operating system that the core values falls underneath. Then we have our freak, like the foundational 
kind of sayings and terminology the same way you should in a business. We have be a freak. We have stay in the green. We have no excuses. And we have I am fucking awesome. And these are ways that we operate, ways that we think, way that we work together. And these things mean stuff to us. Stay in the green has to do with emotional discipline, emotional control, and regulation. So just such a quick overview of the core values to show you how they should be deep and meaningful. We're not going to go too deep into that. There's a whole previous episode. Go check it out on core values alone. But that is one of the ways to run your family like a business. You should have core values. All right. Now that you have that set, what we stand for, how we operate, how we think, and we're all in agreement on this. All right. Next is you should have you have team meetings regularly to probably more than you should be and probably ineffective at work, but they should be effective meetings and they should be useful and have an out- outcome-driven meetings and purpose-driven meetings. You should be having family meetings, which don't happen. We also did a full episode on family meetings, so check that one out. I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. And so those those family meetings should be happening. And those should be both all hands. Like, think about it. You have a maybe a monthly all hands team meeting, the entire company gets together once a month for a company meeting. But then also once a week, you might have a leadership meeting or every two weeks you have a a leadership meeting or every week you have a sales meeting or a department meeting. The same thing. You should have these different variations of meetings, the same way it works and and are effective and outcome and purpose driven in the business. You should do the same thing in your freaking family. We have meetings where So there's four of us, meetings where all four of us are together. That's once a week. Then every week on the calendar, on the schedule, we also have a meeting where it's just me and the two kids and then my wife and the two kids. Then there's meetings where it's just me and my son and other meetings where it's me and my daughter. So there's one-on-one. There's meeting with just me and the kids. So these are all, and then my wife does all those same various in the meetings also every single week. So that's all these different dynamics and they're all effective. They're all outcome driven. They're all purpose driven. They're all connection driven. They're all relationship building driven the same way that they should be in, in the business with a, with a specific outcome and purpose that you're having those meetings for. You're not having, you shouldn't be having meetings in your business just to have them the same thing in your family. These are meaningful and purpose driven and outcome driven meetings. So the next one is all right, there's meetings, but there also should be feedback. There also should be conflict. There also should be tough conversations. You shouldn't avoid this shit in business, and you absolutely should not avoid them in your personal life, in your family, in your household. You should be having, giving, giving and receiving feedback to both your spouse, to your kids. You should be giving them feedback. You should also be getting feedback from them. Whether And if it stings, sometimes it should. Sometimes it might be out of line, that's fine. You have the, you can determine and have the discernment about which feedback is useful and which ones are maybe a little off base or whatever, but don't avoid the conflict. Don't avoid the tough conversation because it just builds up and builds up resentment. Just like in a business, it builds up. And next thing you know, someone quits and you're, you're caught off guard. and wondering how do they quit? Guess what? That motherfucker quit like six months or 12 months or 18 months. They quit in their mind long before they actually told you they quit. They finally just grew the balls to go through with it, but they've been half-assing, bullshitting, looking for another job for a a long time before they actually quit, which means your business was suffering because of it. So don't push off the feedback. Don't push off the conflict. Don't push off the tough conversations in the business or in the home, in the family. The next thing is freedom and autonomy to do things the way that work for each individual and treat each individual different so they have the freedom to operate the way they want. We do homeschooling here. And our homeschooling is vastly different and changing. And there's, it's so freedom-based and different than any type of homeschooling curriculum you would ever see. But I guarantee it's just as or probably 10 times more effective because it's using that freedom to get the job done. There might be certain tasks that need to get done, but you know what? You have the freedom to figure it out and do it the way that works for you as long as it gets done the right way up to standard, the same thing in the business and the family. There needs to be a level of freedom where it's not just this is what you have to do. This is exactly how you do it. No other way and that's it because how do you grow? How do you learn? How do you develop? How do you get better? You don't. So that's the next thing. There has to be a level of freedom. Also, just like in business, you could say there's an organizational chart or whatever you want to call it but there's different roles. You should have different roles in the family, just like you do in the business. And knowing whose roles are what, who's responsible for what, 
who's what and also besides the roles there should be rituals there should be rules we have tons of family rituals we also did another full episode on that check that out all of our wacky freak family family rituals but you should have your rituals in the business the way that you kind of operate and do the way you do things which is tied into the culture which we'll get into us in a second but you should have those roles and rituals routines and and that goes into scheduling also you have a very probably strong scheduling system in the business why do you not have it in your family you should look at your calendar it should be just as much family or even more family stuff than work you're only at, you're only working whatever amount of hours a day 8 hours a day where's all your family stuff in your calendar that should be your scheduling should be just as tight and top notch and serious and structured in your family as it is in your business like we know exactly who's working out with who when they're working out with each other we know who's having meetings with who what's the purpose of those meetings we know when we're recording we know when we're recording this right now we we are operating the family as if it's a business a successful thriving impactful business the, and the, what better business could you be in as a man than fathering your family that is the number one business that is even a higher business than your actual career and businesses when it comes down to it, that is your number one priority and business is the business of running a family, building that culture and camaraderie. That's the same thing. You need to build a culture and camaraderie in your team. People oft, often say about their team, oh, we're like a family. And then you see how they operate and you're like, this is how you treat your fucking family. This doesn't look like it to me, arguing and bickering and backstabbing and all that shit. That ain't the culture and camaraderie of a family. So sometimes some of this, I want you to think about the reverse. How could you start taking some things the way you operate in your family and how can you operate that in your business? Also terminology, inside jokes, however you want to call it. Like we have all, we have, we could almost speak a different language. We almost have a freak language. We could talk about things and no one will have no clue what we're talking about. We all will understand what it means. So have your own quirky little words and inside jokes and terminology and wording and phrases that mean something to you. And that actually makes you connected more and bond more. And now let's go on to the, a little more of the, of the serious side for a second is just like in business and the military, leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving, setting boundaries, setting standards, set boundaries, setting, enforcing or setting, living, and enforcing standards and boundaries. You do that in a business. It should be done in the family. You should have boundaries in the family, in the home, about what are the expectations and make it clearly communicated. That's why that goes into the leadership and the teamwork. You have to lead by communicating the correct boundaries with each other so you're not breaking the boundaries and live those boundaries yourself so you earn the right to enforce them with other people. And that's communicating them the right way. That's how you set the boundaries by communicating. Live them. That's leadership. Living those standards and boundaries. All ways that you should be running the family like a business. Then going into other, other areas like the, the around the house. There's specific areas around the house that, that are very intentional. They're energy-driven. They're purpose-driven layout of the house at each like over there's my thinking corner that's where i do my reading writing journaling you should have specific areas of the house with an intentional environment and energy for that area just like in business you have a board meeting or boardroom where you go in there for meetings same thing we have home offices we have a, 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 what we call the gray room that's our lounge room where we sit and we chill and we hang out and play video games and watch movies we know that's the gray room and we, so it has names and environment at a certain type of energy you bring it to that. In, in, in the, the office, the business, you might have a break room. You might have a whatever, a, re, a rest room or whatever it is. But intentional energy-driven environments that you create the same way you would in the office and in the business, in the house. Some other quick ones are things like budgeting. Like, how do you budget things? How do you think about money? How do you operate? You budget in the, in the business and you're, you're tight shipped and making sure you're not wasting any spending, but then not doing it in your personal life and you're blowing it all and, and not keeping track of where money's going. You have all these subscriptions you don't even use and they just come out automatically. There's no budgeting going on and you're not keeping track of it. That's a simple, another quick, simple one. We're not going to go too much into that. That's pretty basic and boring. Uh, vacations. You have specific vacations you look forward to in the business. You know when they are, where they are. They're very intentional. Same thing 
on the personal side. Here's a huge one that most families miss. This is a, a huge one, is having set goals and dreams and what is that ideal future? What is the lifestyle we want to live? What is the ideal lifestyle, the ultimate ideal? We call it the freak freedom lifestyle. And what goals are in alignment with that lifestyle? And there's business goals out the ass. You know the metrics for everything. You know how many leads you need to make, how many calls you need to make a day, how many sales to get to the numbers, to get to the quota, to get to the goals, to get to the revenue that you need, to make the profit you need. You know all that shit. And then on the family side, zero freaking goals, zero purpose, zero intentionality. How about you start doing some of that deep intentional goal setting on the family side? And all the goals should be in alignment with that ultimate ideal freak freedom lifestyle that you want to live. Goal setting. And just to kind of almost wrap this up, so I just want to go straight forward, just quick and straight to the point, just bang this out to give you some stuff to, to think about and ways to run your family is, what other ways can you think of? I want to know what other ways can you think of that you can take what you either where you run your business, if you have a military background, what, what, what aspects of that, of your childhood, of your own personal schooling, or whatever personal experiences you had, good or bad, what other ways can you think of that you could take these other experiences from business or other places and help it run your business, or sorry, run your family? And then I want you to think about the flip side and put it in the comments down below because I want to hear about what you have to come up with this one also, is how to run your business like a family. People talk about, yeah, my, my family, the business is like a family like we mentioned earlier, but it ain't fucking happening. So how can you run your business like a family? What aspects of the way that you actually do work and live and lead as a, a, a family can actually then transfer over into business? So reverse of everything we're saying. This has mostly been what we're saying is, how can you take aspects of business that are working and transfer them to your family? I want you to also not think about on your own, the way that you run your family. Think about whatever's working. Success leaves clues. Whatever's working in one area of your life, there's probably some a lot of those things that you can use in other areas of your life. If it's working here, it's probably some way you could tie it in and let it work over here. So what other ways can you think of that you can run your family like a business? And then the flip side of that, how can you run your business more like a family? Put that down in the comments down below. I want to hear about it. And I'll tell you what, these are a lot of the deep topics that we dive into in the Freak Father Alliance, which is a men's mentorship group coaching program where it's I, I literally help entrepreneur fathers and men to develop a no excuses mindset so they can build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning so they can attack their mission and create their ideal lifestyle with time freedom for their families and start running their family like an efficient, thriving, impactful, obsessed, and intentional business. If that makes sense to you, if that sounds like something that you would want to get involved with, send me a message. We'll talk about the Freak Father Alliance. I could tell you all about it. It actually is, has comes included with the Infinite Freak Fitness Formula, with his, which is the last training program you ever need. It is an online fitness and training program for men and women who do workouts by themselves and maybe have become bored or confused or not getting the results you want, where you literally become your own personal trainer so that you stay in the best shape all of your life, all year round with the last workout program you ever need. And that's included with the Freak Follow Alliance. If you want information on either of those, just send me a private message. I will hook you up. Also, answer those questions I asked you earlier about running the family like a business and the business like a family. And I will see you next time on the Steve Ecker Show podcast. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses.